Hello and welcome to the BC Technical Webinar Series. We will be covering an overview of how automatic motion correction affects semi-quantitative scoring in Cardiac SPECT. Today's webinar session is worth one voice credit. In order to receive this credit, you must complete the online test which will be available immediately after this webinar. A passing score of 80% is required for the voice credit to be awarded. You may take the test more than once if need be. A certificate will be emailed to you at the close of this webinar and following successful completion of the online test. Please keep this certificate as proof of your completion of the webinar. The following outlines what will be discussed during this webinar. We will define semi-quantitative scoring and its role in nuclear medicine cardiac spect. We will learn how summed stress scoring, summed rest scoring, and summed difference scoring are calculated using a 17-point model. We will learn how to evaluate patient motion using linogram and sinogram images. We will learn how to manually process a non-gated study in QPS, which is quantitative perfusion analysis. And lastly, we will understand how automatic motion correction affects semi-quantitative scoring. Myocardioperfusion imaging performed with non-gated single photon emission computed tomography, also known as non-gated SPECT imaging, are analyzed not only visually but also by a number of semi-quantitative calculations. Three of the most important semi-quantitative measures include the summed stress score, the summed rest score, and the summed difference score. To understand semi-quantitative scores obtained with SPECT imaging, it is necessary to first become familiar with the coronary arterial model used. Semi-quantitative scoring was initially based on a 20-segment model, which was used before the current 17-segment model was introduced and adopted as the standard. The 17-segment model includes four segments from the apical slice, six segments from the mid and basal slices short axis, and one segment from the vertical long axis slice. The summed stress score, summed rest score, and summed difference score incorporate the extent and severity of perfusion defects during the non-gated stress and rest imaging datasets. The summed stress score is a semi-quantitative index obtained by adding the individual scores from the 17 segments that are analyzed and scored during a stress study. Each segment is scored on a 5-point scale. 0 equals normal, 1 equals slight reduction of tracer uptake, equivocal, 2 equals moderate reduction of uptake, usually implies a significant abnormality. 3 equals severe reduction of uptake, and 4 equals absence of uptake. A summed stress score in the normal range indicates an area of normal perfusion, while higher summed stress scores reflect greater extent and severity of perfusion defects during the stress study. Some stress score less than 4 indicates normal area of perfusion. A sum stress score that equals 4 through 8 indicates mildly abnormal area of perfusion. A sum stress score that equals 9 through 13 indicates a moderately abnormal area of perfusion. And a sum stress score greater than 13 indicates a severely abnormal area of perfusion. The summed rest score is the summed total of each individual segment score obtained during the rest study. The summed difference score, which indicates the amount of ischemia and the degree of defect reversibility, is the difference between the summed stress score and the summed rest score. The summed difference score, less than 2, indicates no ischemia. The sum difference score that equals 2 through 4 indicates mild ischemia. 
The sum difference score that equals 5 through 8 indicates moderate ischemia, and the sum difference score greater than 8 indicates severe ischemia. These scores have been shown to have substantial prognostic value. According to several reputable hospitals and cardiologists, one of the most important numbers in detecting coronary artery disease is a stress-summed score greater than 8. This showed an 83% sensitivity in a perfusion function approach to the detection of coronary artery disease. In the same study, differentiating ischemia versus no ischemia in patients with cardiomyopathy, a stress-summed score greater than 8 was the single most significant indicator. Does patient motion corrected by automatic motion correction algorithms impact quantitative scoring? 18 patients totaling 36 non-gated cardiac spec studies with patient motion were used as data to investigate whether automatic motion correction had any impact on some stress scoring, some rest scoring, and some different scoring on cardiac spec reconstructed data. Automatic motion correction was performed on both stress and rest non-gated data sets. Both motion-corrected and non-motion-corrected datasets were reconstructed using identical parameters. The studies were then processed with a Cedars Quantitative Perfusion software for scoring. The results were displayed on an Excel worksheet for corrected and uncorrected datasets. Here we could identify any trends related to automatic motion correction and quantitative scoring. The following patient data was acquired on a Siemens eCam dual head gamma camera. With 90 degree configuration, non circular orbit, rest imaging at 25 seconds per frame and stress imaging 25 seconds per frame, 64 by 64 matrix, 1.45 zoom, and 64 total frames. Automatic motion correction was performed on a Siemens eSoft workstation. The manual states to place the red box around the heart without touching the organ. Once the red box is around the heart, go to the linogram and sinogram images and compare the results. The horizontal line on the series frame indicates the row of pixels used to create the sinogram. The same row of pixels from each frame is extracted and stacked from top to bottom to create the image. All edges of the sinogram should be smooth. A rough or displaced edge may indicate patient motion. To make a linogram, each frame from the raw data is summed into a column. The first image is placed on the left and the last image is on the right, so you read the linogram left to right. All edges on a linogram should be smooth and any rough or displaced edge may indicate patient motion. This motion correction program will correct up to 5 pixels of motion, which is 6.6 .6 millimeters times 5, which equals 33 millimeters, which is also around 1.5 inches. Here, the quantitative scoring was calculated using Cedars QPS software in order to accurately score the processed spec images. Every patient was processed in the slices page to make sure the contours matched the myocardium. If the contours did not match, the manual option was used. We see the contours match perfectly in this example. The black arrow points out the quantitative scoring we are tracking. One last point that we cannot overlook are the limits. Limits are the data sets that will be used to calculate the patient's scoring. In Cedars QPS, we have a choice of MIBI-MIBI or SEPT-DUAL. 
Whether the patient was acquired with Cardiolite or MyoView, for both scans use the MIBI-MIBI limit. If Thallium was used for the rest, then select Sept Dual. There is no limit for thallium used for both rest and stress imaging sets. Between the 36 patient scans, there were some with less than a pixel of motion and some with over 5 pixels of motion, meaning over 1.5 inches. On a side note, patient motion is one of the major factors responsible for suboptimal nuclear cardiology scans. Motion causes loss of resolution and inaccurate results in whatever third-party cardiac software is used for quantitative information. Cardiac 2's resting study showed less than one pixel of motion before automatic motion correction was applied. The motion corrected dataset displayed the study with less than one pixel motion, the same results as the non-motion corrected. Cardiac 2's stress study showed greater than 3 pixels of motion before automatic motion correction was applied. The motion corrected dataset displayed a study with almost 0 pixels of motion. The motion corrected dataset corrected 3 pixels of motion. Here are Cardiac 2's non-motion corrected study quantitative scoring results. The sum stress score equaled 0 the summed rest score equaled 0, and the sum difference score also equaled 0. Now, here is Cardiac 2's with motion corrected study quantitative scoring results. The sum stress score was 6, the summed rest score was 0, and the summed difference score was 6. Cardiac 9's resting study showed around 2 pixels of motion. The motion corrected dataset exaggerated the motion and displayed over 5 pixels of motion after automatic motion correction was applied. The automatic motion corrected dataset increased the motion from 2 to 5 pixels. Cardiac 9's stress study showed greater than 2 pixels of motion before automatic motion correction was applied. The motion corrected dataset displayed a study with relatively the same 2 pixel motion. The motion corrected dataset displayed the same results as the non corrected dataset. Here is Cardiac 9's non motion corrected study quantitative scoring results. The summed stress score was 7, the summed rest score equaled 0, and the summed difference score was 7. Now, here is Cardiac 9's with motion corrected study quantitative scoring results. The summed stress score equaled 13, the summed rest score equaled 10, and the summed difference score was 2. Cardiac 16's resting study showed around 3 pixels of motion. The motion corrected dataset exaggerated the motion and displayed over 5 pixels of motion after automatic motion correction was applied. The automatic motion corrected dataset increased the motion from 3 to 5 pixels. Cardiac 16's stress study showed around 2 pixels of motion. Automatic motion correction was applied and the corrected dataset still displayed 2 to 3 pixels of motion. 
The motion correction dataset displayed more motion than the non-corrected dataset. Cardiac 16's non-motion corrected study quantitative scoring results are the sum stress score was 8, the sum dress score was 5, and the sum difference score equaled 3. Cardiac 16's with motion corrected study quantitative scoring results are the sum stress score equaled 15, the summed rest score was 5, and the summed difference score equaled 9. Cardiac 2 had all zeros for the non-motion corrected, but the motion correction showed a sum stress score of 6 and a sum difference score of 6. Cardiac 9, non-motion corrected, had a summed stress score of 9 and a summed difference score of 9. Then, after motion correction, we had a summed stress score of 13, a summed rest score of 10, and a summed difference score of 2. Cardiac 16, non-motion correction, had a summed stress score of 8, a summed rest score of 5, and a sum difference score of 3. After motion correction, we increased the sum stress score by 7, the sum dress score stayed the same, and the sum difference score was 6. After motion correction in all three examples, the semi-quantitative scoring went up from either normal to significantly abnormal or abnormal to grossly abnormal. Automatic motion correction increased the scores in all three patients. The results showed that 33% of the patients had no changes in their scores after automatic motion correction. 44% of the patients showed an increase of scoring after automatic motion correction and 22% of the patients showed a decrease in scoring after automatic motion correction. Automatic motion correction is effective for limited patient motion, but rescanning the patient with instructions to limit movement during the scan is always the best option for accurate scores. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our webinar on how automatic motion correction affects semi-quantitative scoring in cardiac spect. Please don't forget to take the test.